This is Twit. You may remember this. This was our, our 12 volt odor eater. It's a uh, jar of activated carbon that uh, or charcoal that has a little fan so that you can put this like right next to the litter box and it, oh. it basically just eliminates a lot of the odors coming out. This was the fan that we used from the uh, the swamp cooler. We made ourselves a little home uh, a home built uh, cooler last summer. Uh, these are some of the uh, the cyber goggles and of course there's my little Google spinner just to show you that the code is still working. Yes, I can trigger all of these devices just by sending the proper key. Now also, uh, I've switched off to a relay that actually has all of the, the relays working. So right now, with just the setup I've got on the table, I could trigger eight devices and turn anything on or off as I choose. Uh, and then also turn everything off. Oh, this, we, the reason why we did it this way, where I'm showing you how to use the keyboard is because there, anytime you're developing a project in Arduino, and this, this goes to any of you who are, are trying to get into this world, you always want to start with something that's simple. And so, something that's simple here is the ability to trigger via the, the programming console. So if I'm programming this Arduino, I already have access to a console. I might as well make it work this way. However, what we promised was that we were going to let you use your old IR remote to be able to trigger all this stuff. Let me show you how easy it is to do that. So if you go ahead and go to my computer, uh, Burke, there we go. So this is a little bit different. We've added this, the IR remote, because we're now using the IR receiver that we used last week. So we had to put the library back in there. We added this because this defines the pin to which our IR receiver is connected, in which case, in this case, it's connected to pin 11. Then we have this. This turns on the IR receiver, and this creates, a, again, just like before, it's a storage space. It's a place for when the codes start coming in, it's going to put them into that. Okay, now this part you've seen before. This tells me where all my relays are connected to. In this particular case, pins three through ten. This is the one that that uh, sets is the relay on or off. So if it's one, it's off. If it's zero, it's on. And uh, this is important because this comes at the start of the program. So when I first turn on the Arduino, everything is going to default to off. If I set this for for zero, so if I changed all these number ones to a, no, a number zero. Every time I rebooted the Arduino, everything would start on, which probably not good. You don't want mm -hmm. that, right? You want everything to de default off. Now, in my setup, uh, this part you've seen before, I'm just setting my pin modes, just like we did in the last two examples. But this, tur it, it starts the receiver. It initializes the receiver. It says, hey, receiver, I'm going to start needing you. Make sure you're on. All right. So let's go ahead and move on. This part right here, again, this is what I love, super simple, the loop. The, this is the part of the program that would just keep happening over and over again. There's nothing in here except for calls to those exact same two functions that we had in the last two examples. This is what we want. You're building up little by little, incremental knowledge. And then when I go to the check input, this looks the same except this. In the last example, we had that uh, the if statement. And the if statement said, if you receive anything from the console, from the keyboard, then do this. This is the same thing, except if I receive anything from the IR receiver. So instead of the keyboard, it's from the IR receiver, then do something. And instead of uh, the ASCII code, so 48, 49, 50, 51, I'm doing this. These are the codes that are actually being received by the IR receiver. Everything else in this program, except this, and the parts that are specific to using an IR receiver, are exactly the same as they were in the previous example. So that's this is why that's important, because we, we, we don't want people to think, oh, wait, where did that come from? The only thing that's different is what I'm comparing each of these case statements against. All right, so let's, let's go ahead and load this up. Let's make sure we're going to the right thing. We're going to an Arduino Uno. We are going to port 5, and let's send it. So it's going to compile the sketch, and then it's going to upload it to my Arduino. And if I've done this right, I can go ahead and start pressing buttons on this remote control, and uh, then we can see what's actually coming in. How do you know which buttons to push? Oh, well, because I'm, I'm defining them. OK. All right, let, me, let me actually, good, very good question. Let me show you that. So let's go ahead and, and go here. We're going to go open up my serial monitor. And I'm going to start by pushing, let's say, the volume up button. And that's the code that gets sent on the volume up button. But it's, it doesn't do anything because I don't have, there's nothing here that that uses that, that code, right. right? That code doesn't exist 
in my case statements. And remember what we, uh, we talked about. If it doesn't exist in the list of case statements, it just doesn't do anything. So, and I, I can do that for a bunch of them. So uh, if you go back to that screen, this is what the mute code looks like. Here's what the source code looks like. Here's what the menu code looks like. None of those do anything. However, let's look at this. What's the very first code here? Case 40BE807F, um, which, hold on, let me do this. If, if I push the number one, that's the code that gets sent, 40BE807F. And uh, if you go to the, uh, the wide shot, Burke, you'll notice I can now trigger all these devices just using the keys on my remote. So, and actually, to, to further prove that, I'm going to go ahead and yank this. So this is the cable connecting it to the computer. So it's no longer connected to the no computer. No cables. The only thing coming into this is an external power source. So a 12 volt power source, which powers everything. And I can turn everything on and off to my heart's content. So on and off are the same buttons. Right. So here, actually, I'll give that to you. So uh, let's say, actually, hit two. Oh, the receivers are here. Two. Uh, OK, three. Four. Again. So that's, I like that one, four. So hit four again. So every time you hit four, it's either going to turn it on or off. So remember, if it's on, turn it off. If mm -hmm. it's off, turn it on. And if you hit zero, I added one more case statement, that turns everything off. Everything that's the on. smash. But it doesn't turn everything back on. No, because, well, Sad. that, I mean, I, I could do, actually, if you wanted, let, let's, that's, thank you. See, Megan, you, you've got such great ideas. Uh, we're not using the number nine, because there's only eight relays. You're, you're doing that a lot. Too <laughs> I really much. Am. We're only using eight relays. But I could add, let's go ahead and add one more case statement okay. to say, turn everything on. Yes. OK, so this, let's do that. <laughs> turn everything on. You've got great ideas, turn Megan. Turn all the things on. I'll turn on all the things. Turn on all the things. OK, so the first thing we need to do is we need to find what code that is. So point, point the remote at the IR receiver and hit the number 9. 9. OK, so that's the code. Remember, FFFF, -F -F -F, that's what happens when it, you hold it down. It just repeats. <laughs> okay, so that's 40BE906F. That's the code I'm going to have to program in. So let's go to the bottom of my software here. This is the all off, and that was on 40BE00FF. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy that, Control C, Control V, and I'm going to go ahead and create a new case statement using that code. So if we go back over here, hit 9 again. There we go. So this code, control C, control V. So I am now telling it, if it sees that code, do the thing b uh, below here. And I'm going to put all on. And I'm going to switch this number to zero, because zero means on. Oop. 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 There we go. And that's it. Okay. So if I've done this right, let's go ahead and upload this. If I've done this right, it means that now you can hit 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And those will turn on those individual relays. You can hit 9, which turns everything off, uh, to, on, and 0, which turns everything off. And so go ahead and there you go. And now hit 0 to turn it all off, and hit 9. And it turns everything on. There you go. You did that so quickly. Yeah, that's, that's what I like about this, because once you've got an Arduino controlling this, it's all software. Everything can be custom. <laughs> it's as if I never used a remote before, but it's exciting because we did it. Exactly, we did it. And look how many keys there are on that, on that uh, remote that you're not using. I can have that trigger combinations. I can say, hey, you know what? If I hit the mute button, turn on one and six and turn off five. So it's all about what you have it connected to and what you want it to do. But once you've got this wired in, Everything can be set in software, which is what I love. Because once I'm to that point, it's just me customizing. It's, it's like you, how you customize your phone, right? I can customize what my software does because I know that the hardware is already working.